What the hell happened on social media this past week in the Love is Blind world? Because I am gooped and gagged. Welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. I typically cover TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. So today we're going to be talking about episodes 10 and 11 of Love is Blind season 6, and there was new tea coming out on social media. People were being exposed from the cast. Quite a few plot twists that I was not expecting, so I'm excited to talk about some of those with y'all today along with these last two episodes that came out where we finally got our pod squad confrontations that we were desperately wanting as well as some nasty dramatic fights. It's funny how I started off this season with like I actually have hope for this season super optimistic and then we somehow ended up at the train wreck we're at today. <laughs> and by the way, I will be doing a live stream next week on March 6th, the day the finale drops, at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time. If you can't make it, there will be a VOD or video on demand of the stream with timestamps and everything so you can hear my thoughts on the finale. Let me start with my disclaimer. As we've learned through the season, we can't judge a book by its cover and we can't judge a reality TV person over their edit. And this season, producers miss like half the exciting things on camera anyway, so we are judging these people based on an edit that doesn't even include a lot of the interesting interactions between them, so take it easy, take it as entertainment, let's just have fun with it. But starting off with Amy and Johnny, who are our strongest couple, they are still going strong. I have a lot of hope for these two. I think they're gonna make it. Their edit continues to be positive. I continue to be obsessed with Amy. The scene of her trying to build furniture, I'm a princess, I'm not meant to do these things. This is literally me and I love her. She's like the version of me that is normy enough to be cast on Love is Blind, if that makes sense. So the big thing they had set up for these episodes with Amy and Johnny was meeting Amy's dad and getting his blessing, which for Amy is required for this marriage. I wasn't too worried about the dad. Yes, she says that he is strict or hard to please, but based on the teaser, I felt like the tears when they were meeting the dad were gonna be tears of joy. And they were. Johnny was kind of behaving like he was at a job interview and saying all the right things, honestly. He has ambitions in his career. He has a good heart. So the dad really had nothing to complain about. He made a really good impression and the dad gave his blessing to Amy. I got the impression with Amy's parents that they really trust her. Maybe she wasn't expecting that side of things and was just like, oh, they're gonna be hard on you because, you know, I'm their baby, their little girl, and um, they're very protective of me. But when we saw the dad and the mom later on at the wedding dresses, it felt like her parents just like really love her and just really support her. Like even her mom is like, whether you make a good decision or a bad decision, we are here for you. It feels like they have a healthy dynamic and like a healthy amount of trust in her um, and just support her even if they think this experiment is rash because apparently they didn't like approve of the experiment and her going to this. Once we met them, it felt like, oh, it's not a problem. They're trusting of their daughter and if things go wrong, they're there for her, which is really sweet. I also have hope for Amy and Johnny just because I haven't seen anything too negative or damning of them on social media. I saw actually Amy did a Q&A on her Instagram and there was one question about like why she went on the experiment and she gave a lengthy response talking about like she was really apprehensive about it all. She had never seen the show. Her friends encouraged her to apply, but then she had like trips lined up right around when filming was gonna start so it wasn't gonna work out and she was gonna decline but then magically her trip got canceled and she was getting all these signs to go and she talks a lot uh, through these episodes too about all the signs pointing towards her and Johnny actually getting married and that answer she gave to that question helped me see why Amy was a great fit for the experiment and the type of contestant like fans want every contestant to be. It just feels more genuine and that she wasn't thinking about all the fame and the clout that comes with a show like this and the platform of it all and that she was 
thinking about love and like being encouraged by her friends and it just feels more like real and as we've seen with a lot of these cast members it's not usually the case so that gave me more good vibes around amy uh, we'll see if they say yes but i feel like they will the edit has been consistently positive with them they have a, a conversation talking about their last names and how amy wants to hyphenate hers and johnny's very like sure i don't care do what you want to do with your life they want their kids to have his last name they are both cool with that and we also get a continuation of the birth control conversation which is more what i was anticipating about these episodes with this couple i liked seeing that after doing some research they came back and talked about the options again in a more informed way. It was like Amy said, have you heard of the Hispanic Scholarship Fund? Mama, let's research. And they did research. And he came back talking about vasectomies and how they're not always reversible. So if they definitely want kids, it might not be the best option. It's a surgery. It's more involved than he expected. I loved this resolution to the birth control thing. It's actually not quite resolved, but she does say she is heavily considering getting on the pill so it looks like that's the route she'll probably go i guess we'll see and she's very much looking forward to the physical i like that johnny as a man had to research what are his options he talked about there's like a pill they're developing for men but it's only in like the first trials and they don't know yet any long-term effects side effects and i love that i love that he looked into what can he do as a man and had to for the first time in his life very privileged of him and he was okay with it he's not pressuring her to research it all on her own solve it by herself that showed a very healthy dynamic it could have been something a more toxic couple would have fought about in these episodes we also got the obligatory wedding dress and suit try-ons which are not my favorite it's actually my least favorite segment if you've been watching my videos you know i don't like wedding stuff like I don't like the wedding industry because it just feels so like how there's very little kind of creative freedom with weddings in my opinion and especially wedding dresses I always say this but I just always wish it was more of an expression of like the fashion of the person like what is like maybe more like red carpet like what is a woman's red carpet look and that's her wedding dress you know whatever the color is whatever the style that's why i don't get excited by wedding dress try-ons because it's all very samey but i do have to say this season might be my favorite like batch of wedding dresses i kind of feel like the cottage core movement of like post 2020 has helped the wedding dress fashion a little bit or like I don't know, now I see more gowns that have like more like applique of like nature and maybe more like an off-white, more like lace or features to it. I don't know if it's related to cottage core, but it just feels kind of like the trend to be a little more fairy tale forest vibes. Like I really liked Bliss's dress in season four and it was kind of like that. And now in this season, Chelsea and Amy kind of had this style. I don't know what to call it. I'm not a wedding dress person, obviously, but I really liked both Chelsea and Amy's picks. I feel like it reflected them really well. And then I really loved AD's pick too, uh, which was super like minimalist and corseted and the drape. And it was, it was just a gorgeous dress. So I don't know if these women just had tastes I liked in wedding dresses, but this has been my favorite group of wedding dresses collectively. And yeah, this couple seems really solid. We see them go on like a glamping date and they reflect on the experience very close to the wedding day. They both seem very sure, very solid. It's like what I've been saying every time. My notes for them, every video gets shorter and shorter. It's just like, doing great positive edit saying yes at the altar next let's talk about clay and ad we meet ad's mom and i loved ad's mom so much she had a lot of good wisdom it's unfortunate because clay is obviously just not there <laughs> clay and ad's status has not changed much since last batch of episodes i was really sad to hear ad say to her mom like i haven't seen clay since yesterday afternoon i had set up this whole craft at, at our home and 
uh, made a list of 25 reasons why I love him and like got him all his favorite snacks like basically prepared this whole like at home date that was sounded super thoughtful and sweet and the man didn't come home I'm over Clay as a partner like Clay seems like such a fun guy to like be buddies with or like have at a party but as a partner like him not coming to home this often and he arrives at the lunch with the mom and says you know he is working and been super busy and does feel bad about his schedule but it's just not enough like ad is here putting in like 20 million times the effort and he's just smooth talking his way around it and ad is like fully just buying into it in love doesn't care it seems like so they talk to her mom and her mom realizes like clay is always putting this pressure on himself because of his parents divorce after 24 years of marriage i really appreciated ad's mom saying your parent shit is your parent shit and it's not fair for you to carry that with you she's very much right i just don't think clay is gonna listen <laughs> to be honest with ad and clay it's like the same conversations over and over he's worried about his parents he's worried about his cheating demons we've heard about seems worried about the commitment of it all and clay is such a smooth talker he like totally wins over ad's mom i think because she asks him about his career and he talks about how he's hustling and this and that and he's an entrepreneur and all of that and I feel like moms love that stuff and love that you know he has ambition and is out there grinding so I think the mom just got won over by that his looks and he's very charismatic um so the mom definitely approves but also tells AD like your best is not enough for him then he's not worth your while or something like that the mom does remain like ad's number one hype woman and I, I loved that about her i liked her mom being so supportive and believing in them but i just worry that ad is saying like she would follow him anywhere she would follow him off a cliff without a parachute because she knows that he'll be there to catch her i'm sorry but the man can't even be there at home for the night how is he gonna be there to catch you off a cliff you know like i don't know where she's getting this feeling of like he'll always be there for me when he's physically not even there for her very much it seems like every conversation ad and clay have ends really positive like at the end of this he reassures her and her mom and says like you know i chose to be here and seems very sure of it all but i just don't buy it and they have another conversation that convinced me that direction it's a scene where they're just working at home and uh, they're, they like apply for their marriage license so you know it's getting serious. <laughs> but again, he brings up his dad cheating and how he never wants to be in a situation that he's gonna cheat. Those demons, man, they're getting him. Also how he was watching Love is Blind and seeing like men that were actually ready for marriage and kind of like, oh, I haven't been this stable type of guy for AD so far. I feel like he's... He's starting to like realize it himself, but AD is not receptive to it. They don't fight or anything, but she's just like, I like you how you are. I don't want you to emulate the guys on um, previous Love is Blinds. I just want you to be you and I accept you. She also reassures him like, whether it's a yes or no at the altar, I will be okay, which I think is so ballsy of her and shows how independent AD is. She's totally opposite from Chelsea, who we'll talk about in a sec. And I appreciate how AD is is so like self-assured and independent and secure that she knows no matter what happens with clay she will be okay it seems like a really simple and obvious thing but it's important to know that about yourself that you'll be okay even if you know the worst happens in the situation but in this conversation he is kind of implying like why do we have to get married so soon like on this date that the show has placed for us. I think he's trying to suggest moving the date out and the, the marriage date, but AD rejects that and says, no, I don't wanna be a long-term fiance and I wanna respect the timeline of the experiment. And honestly, I think they're both valid in 
their thoughts. I mean, to be fair to Kalei, this experiment is ridiculous, I say all the time. It's ridiculous to get married to someone in like four weeks from meeting them. So if I were him, I would probably be thinking that too, <laughs> like, why do we have to get married so fast? Can we just see where it goes? But I also understand her perspective of like, she went on the experiment to get married and she's ready. But it just goes to show she is ready and he is not. And that's something that has been like kind of the underlying dynamic between these two and like why I haven't thought they were gonna say yes this whole time. And she says she's not down to continue dating if he says no at the altar. Um, and he accepts that. They just have this moment of like, if it's a no, it's over. And it's good that they communicated this. Now he knows. And also if he says no, I feel like she won't be that caught off guard having had this conversation. It kind of feels like their path is laid out before them. And it's weird to me that they keep seeming so good because in all the scenes, basically, they're good. They have a little date where they paint sneakers in a bridal theme that he sets up. And he sets up also like a big dinner date and gets her like a bouquet of chocolates i think but god forbid she gain a pound <laughs> uh, that chocolate's not meant to be eaten i think <laughs> but they both seem very sure at their dates i just think they're aware of the possibilities and maybe just enjoying the moment living in the moment we do in these episodes finally get this pod squad party by the lake clay is late to the party because he was working again i feel so bad for ad because he's like absent so much and she's honestly so independent that she's like fine with it but it's also not okay when you're like trying to speed run a long-term stable relationship if that makes sense ad does have one of the best moments of these episodes at the lake when she's confronting sarah ann about the dm that she sent to jeremy where she was basically at the end like let me know if you change your mind about laura <laughs> i'm here i'm willing to meet up ad calls her out and drags her ass and it was super fierce sarah ann kept trying to deflect and say oh but in the dm i said and ad's like I saw the DM, I know what you said. I read that shit and you were out of line, basically. I just love the girl's girl energy of AD and she seems like the kind of friend any girl would want to have. Unfortunately, she is one of those girls that's like so good at giving advice and stepping up for her best friend's respect but has blinders for her own relationship. I feel like that's very relatable queen of her because I know people like that. So I feel for AD, I feel like she's every woman, they're all in me. Wait, what is it? <laughs> What's the song? But yeah, good for her because Laura was over there dealing with Jeremy, who's like the guy who actually fucked up in the relationship, but AD was not gonna let Sarah Ann totally get away with overstepping boundaries and being inappropriate with an engaged man. Like, it was nice of her to kind of take that burden off Laura to call out Sarah Ann because Laura has bigger problems and AD was there for her in this way of like, no bitch, you stepped out in line and you're not gonna try to sugarcoat it because that's very much what Sarah Ann was doing. And I stand AD for that. She's queen, she's cunty, she's fierce. She deserves better. I hope for the best for a happy ending for her that does not involve marrying Clay. And also I already said, but her wedding dress was iconic. I mean, AD would look good in a potato sack, but that dress on her body, she was serving. It's one of the most sickening wedding dresses that I've seen. I mean, she can literally model wedding dresses. Um, so it's a lot to do with her, I think. And then she had a veil that said words, till death do us part. And I liked that little flair too. I mean, I like anything that makes a dress like a little bit different. Um, and I had never seen words on a veil. Like, in that way, like the big train. Oh, it's it's pretty fierce and I liked it. And in the teaser, we do see the shot of the veil. It's very magical. And with AD and Clay, I find it strange that we have not seen Matthew or Amber in these pod dates. They're not helping the producer plant allegations and conspiracy theories that we all have. All we get as far as a mention is 
the boys say that Matthew looks like Clark Kent and that he's very attractive. How could y'all lie to these girls' faces? Because Clark Kent my ass. And we don't get an update on Amber. We never see her again. But she was part of this wave of like people getting exposed on social media and it looks like she had like a boyfriend during filming. I don't know how verified that T is. It's more in the background, I think because she has been very irrelevant for most of these episodes. But yeah, she she is one of these that got exposed for potentially being in a relationship, either right before filming or, or during filming. I think during filming, which doesn't help her case um, about people thinking she might be planted by production. Um, I'm buying that theory more and more. I think the biggest tell for me is that they're not part of the pod squad celebrations or anything. That's pretty weird, especially when he left the show saying, I'm gonna go find Amber. It's like a loose end that they just hope we forgot about. Why show us then? So next let's talk about Chelsea and Jimmy. I swear y'all in my notes, like every other couple is like this much notes and Chelsea and Jimmy are like pages of like <laughs> several paragraphs, but they're the messiest. I mean, <sighs> The biggest plot twist of episodes 10 and 11 was that, like, Jimmy turned out to be one of the best guys on the season. He's probably second best of the featured men behind Johnny. And I did not see that coming. They meet Jimmy's parents, um, and Chelsea makes a great impression. Jimmy and Chelsea are great at pretending to everyone that <laughs> their relationship's perfect, as we've talked about. Jimmy mentions that they've had a few fights, which, nice, it's honest. And Chelsea says, it's not fights, it was more like conversations. Conversations? Ugh. Chelsea is Delulu as Halulu. She also says their communication is stellar. His mom, dad, and sister very much approve of her. I mean, she does make a fine impression. This is one of the smoothest of the family meetings we've seen, and they seem good. However, the next day, or what, around that time, they have a really, really nasty fight. It's clear Chelsea is wasted. This scene is a perfect case study of, like, why arguing with a drunk person is the worst thing ever. Logic goes completely out the window. They don't listen to anything you say. And it kind of feels like the fight becomes a game to the drunk person. At first, she's mad that he went out the previous night. He describes he went out for an hour. Most of that time was driving to and from. It was a friend's birthday. So he just went, supported, showed face, had one drink and came back. And he had like asked her if it was good and she was good with it. But then she started not being good with it because a girl that was in the pods, Mackenzie, who we don't know much about Mackenzie, but we see her at the lake later. And I was just like, who is this Mackenzie? Mackenzie the spy over here, spying on Jimmy at the bar and text Chelsea like, Jimmy's out, why aren't you with him? It seems to me like Chelsea did not have a problem with him going out. She mentioned she was not interested. He mentions like, you weren't interested. But as soon as someone from the pod saw this and like asked her about it, she got embarrassed that one person in a relationship went out by themselves for an hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. Jimmy had so much patience arguing with her. And I'm sure he recognized, like, she's drunk, she's gonna make no sense. But it's more patient than I would ever have with someone in this state and saying these things. At first, she's mad he went out. And then she starts accusing him that he was out with Jess. And he's literally like, what? I've never seen Jess in person. It kind of felt like she was just testing him just in case Jess was there. Like, it's when you accuse someone of something and their reaction will tell you if it was true or not. If he reacted like, how did you know about that? Then she would know he was with Jess. But he wasn't, and his reaction didn't seem like he was at all. Then she starts yelling at him about the friend that, you fucked her, I know you fucked her, which is a scene we saw many times in the teaser, as we predicted. We, we called it, y'all. It was one of the friends. She weaponizes this 
secret, he told her off camera that he had had sex with one of those friends once before. So as I predicted, this uh, fucking, if you will, happened uh, before this engagement, before he ever met Chelsea. I just didn't see like Jimmy having that audacity at, at this point to cheat. He's no Jeremy. She's just super insecure that he's going out with these women, that he texts them all day, and he's upset that she's not letting him be friends with women and not trusting that he does not have a physical relationship with them anymore. Honestly, Jimmy comes off very level-headed. It seems like everything he's saying is the truth because Chelsea doesn't deny the facts like that he was gone for an hour. He confided in her about that he slept with a friend. He could have just kept that to himself and kept it secret from her, but he decided to trust her and then she violated that trust by spilling the beans on camera and using that against him in a fight. So Jimmy just gets mad and starts like wanting to leave the relationship at that point because he's not willing to step back from being friends with his friends, <laughs> which is a very reasonable thing. She's saying that he doesn't love her at all. He's never loved her this whole time. And he keeps reassuring like I have, but obviously he starts getting very frustrated that she believes this because he feels like he's shown her love. And to be fair, he has. Any bad thing he's done is mostly just vibes and also kind of being salty about the Megan Fox comment. Those are his only transgressions um, in this relationship, which are not very concrete for the most part. <laughs> I told y'all he might be a Kwame where he just has hostage face all the time and he's actually very happy. <laughs> um, that's what it seems like after these episodes. But Chelsea is ruining it all and self-sabotaging with her insecurity and she has such anxious attachment that she is trying to control him like she wants him to never go out and she's like mad that he wants to go out because she accuses him of lying in the pods because he said he doesn't like to go out but he's literally like i go out socially occasionally but get home at a decent hour which i totally agree i feel like when someone says i don't like to go out and party all the time i think like clubbing till 2 a.m. every weekend, you know? And even they had talked, I think, about going to like a brewery together and then that's a good date and things like that where she's just making no sense though and he's like making the mistake of entertaining a, a drunk person and a drunk person will just spiral it up until she says like, I hate you, let's end this, like, I don't wanna be engaged to you. They essentially break up in this at the end of this fight and he's trying to leave and she's like, please don't leave. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like her and this type of drunk person in general sees this kind of arguing as like a game. And once it's over, she's just like, oh, please don't go. And it's like, shut up, girl. You just said the nastiest shit to this man, accused him of everything under the sun. Nothing stuck because none of it makes sense. And now you're like, oh, well, like, <laughs> let's go to bed, I guess. So the next morning after the fight, they, in a better mindset on her part, discuss it again. They're very good at coming back after a fight and talking it out. And he essentially says, like, I was feeling very sure about you and marrying you after we met my parents. That went so well. After this fight, I took some time, reflected, and I don't want to get married anymore. And I was like, hallelujah, yes, good, go spread your wings and fly. But somehow she reels him back in. And that's why I started coming around to Jimmy last video. If the vibes really were real that he wasn't into her, he would have left by now. I think he would have been more clear that he's not into her, but every time he just reassures her that he does love her and he has no doubts and that she's his person. So the way she reels him back in, which it makes no sense to me, uh, she apologizes for what happened, but also keeps saying like, it wasn't just me being crazy at, in that fight. Bitch, you were unhinged and he was super reasonable and chill and and patient above all. So she starts kind of crying about how he's throwing in the towel and giving up and that that's not what she would expect from him just because of this hiccup. Jimmy, run, 
run away. I think the deciding factor here was that she says like she's never felt more in love with him than during that fight, which is incredibly toxic and unhealthy. And I, I mentioned in my past videos, like it feels like especially her, she's used to nasty fighting and then just making up and it's all fine. And that's like the dynamic she's fine with in a relationship and thinks is love, I guess. And he's accepting of it too, it seems. Maybe he also feels that. I don't know, but this is not a healthy dynamic. And she says she never wants a fight like this to happen again. But I feel like if she's still drinking this amount, it's gonna happen again. And he just says like, okay, well, if you never cross that line again, I don't want that. He forgives her and the marriage is back on. I could, I, I could not believe that. I was, he was so sure like at the beginning, I, I don't wanna marry you and then gets roped back into it. And he says, she's so damn hard not to forgive. Ugh. Jimmy, who hurt you? <laughs> what is going on? I don't think they should get married. I don't think they make it to the altar. One of y'all commented that in the teaser, we only saw her close up. And we never found out if it was Barbara he fucked or not. My money's still on Barbara. It could have been Maddie. She could be the silent killer. It was kind of nice of the edit to leave that ambiguous, honestly, because he wanted to keep it secret altogether. So the least they could do in this moment is just like... At least it's between one of two people. And the cliffhanger of episode 11 is Jimmy asking Chelsea where she stands on the decision at the altar. And I was shocked by that because, what do you mean? Where do you stand, Jimmy? You're the one, like, putting yourself in a toxic situation more than she is. She's just happy someone's putting up with her bullshit, probably. Why is she the deciding factor? But hopefully she calls it off. I mean... Someone needs to run in and say, I object. Jess, Jess is a perfect candidate. She loves the attention. I don't know if they make it to the altar. It doesn't seem like it. And this teaser did not add any shots of uh, their wedding. It's the same two weddings we keep seeing. I just think, why would they make Chelsea's answer the cliffhanger of like literally the semi-finale of this the season if it isn't something big? Speaking of Jess and Trevor, Jimmy and... Chelsea had the most interesting pod squad confrontations at the lake party. As we talked about already, producers really mess this up because Jimmy and Jessica meeting was pretty anticlimactic. I mean, she's very good at like, she's kind of schoolgirl about it. She's very like nervous and is acting like a girl with a crush around Jimmy a bit, but also like respecting the boundary of them being engaged. Not like Sarah Ann and like trying to DM him or contact him. But when she's in his presence, she's just like, hee hee hee, oh my god. Yeah, when they meet, they just do a side hug. He's not choking because he already got warned. He got to choke in private off camera. <laughs> so we didn't get to see that. And also, Chelsea seeing Trevor was anticlimactic. At some point, she mentions like she saw a picture of him and knows what he looks like. So it was off camera. We did not get that reaction. A lot of y'all commented that y'all lost interest when the producers failed to capture those scenes. And I totally agree and respect that because these are the money shots audience care about. I hope they've learned and maybe next season they'll put more protocols in place of separating them and being more on it with being on camera, they need to get it together. <laughs> Jimmy and Jessica honestly had a good closure conversation. I mean, he does have those interview bits where he says like, I'm attracted to her, you know, her appearance is attractive, whatever. It's nothing groundbreaking with them. He does have this weird moment where he says like, you were still my number one. I'm assuming he means like that day that they broke up or they had their big fight when he said I love you to Chelsea. I don't know, but he does seem a little conflicted that he didn't choose Jessica or just a little bit of wondering about the what ifs of it all. But it all seems pretty natural, especially like compared to Chelsea's conversation with Trevor. Jimmy and Jessica don't seem to have anything bad or shady going on in their conversation. It feels like a good closure thing. They talk to each other as if they're like exes and stuff. Doesn't seem like the door is open. She tells him to like be good to her. It all seems pretty tame. And 
when Chelsea and Trevor talk, she says way more damning things that uh, I've seen a lot of fans point out the hypocrisy of her telling Trevor, like, you're exactly my type, Jimmy knows that, I did love you and I still love you. I don't think she wants to get with Trevor, but if she heard Jimmy say those things to Jessica, she would have an unhinged fit in front of everybody. So that's why, like, even though Jimmy says some things about Jessica, it didn't seem like as much as Chelsea was saying about Trevor. It's very interesting watching this after Trevor got exposed. So if you haven't heard, which you probably have, Trevor got exposed on social media and he is the cast member with the most like legitimate receipts against him in my opinion. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Apparently he was dating someone during this whole experiment, he had a girlfriend, and the girlfriend came out on Instagram, released a lot of text messages with Trevor. She agreed to let him go on the experiment because he, I think, was reached out to on social media, which apparently a lot of these cast members were reached out to via social media. He got reached out to by a casting person uh, on socials and he didn't really know of the show, but then he went and looked into the whole Love is Blind universe and realized what the show could do for the careers of the people that were featured on it. And then he was very dead set on getting on. She was okay with it because he promised like he was just doing it for the show. None of it is real. It's all pretend, you know, I won't get married at the end. I'll just come back. The timestamps on the text messages all seem to check out. Apparently, she screen recorded the text and sent them to some of these TikTok commentators that expose stuff. I don't know. I'll put the main TikTok exposing the Trevor stuff in the description of this video. So y'all can go through if you're interested, like the text messages and see if they seem legit to you or not. But anyway, when Trevor came back, he texted her like, I miss you, I'm back, and the best thing possible happened. Like, I was getting ready to propose, but she broke up with me, so it sounds like my edit's gonna be great, and all this stuff. Also, allegedly, he made a pact with someone else on the cast, we don't know who yet, that no matter what, they if they make it to the altar, they will just say no. And that was the master plan. And it's wild because, you know, a lot of us were fooled by Trevor. He had this himbo, nice guy act. He was watching romance movies and loved butterflies and rainbows and whatever the hell else. And honestly, I did think a little bit back then, like, this seems too good to be true, but I just try my best when I'm starting a new season, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt unless proven otherwise, like innocent until proven guilty. But now he's been proven guilty and uh, it's over. It was just weird to watch the scene of him and Chelsea reuniting with that lens of like everything he's doing is kind of like thought out and calculated and he's trying to come off a certain way. It's funny, even just at the beginning of the conversation, he just has his arm up like flexing it. It's things like that where I'm like, yeah, the this is weird and he's so thought out and then he tells Chelsea like oh I couldn't picture you yelling at someone which he's in for a surprise when he watches the episodes um and Chelsea's just like right she admits they've had some arguments like her and Jimmy have had some arguments there's also a point where Trevor tells her she's attractive totally unprompted which is interesting because it's something Jimmy doesn't do at all I don't know if he knows how Jimmy treats Chelsea but like compliments are just a no-brainer I'm not buying it anymore. I believe the tea and the social media stuff that came out because where there's smoke, there's fire. And it doesn't seem like the ex-girlfriend is benefiting much. So apparently he was dating her all through like last year and this year or when they filmed and broke up with her two weeks before the show premiered and so that's why the ex-girlfriend is kind of scorned at first i was skeptical i wasn't sure what to believe but from what i've seen it seems fairly legitimate in my opinion we'll see though i'll keep an open mind i just feel like now i 
can't see Trevor the same. Another notable moment in the lake party was Chelsea tells Trevor like, have you met our strongest couple of the season? Pointing at Amy and Johnny and Jimmy gets mad <laughs> about that and I feel, I feel bad for Jimmy. He wants to believe his relationship is the best so bad when it's literally like third in line, obviously. At first Chelsea's just like, they are the strongest couple. What are you talking about? <laughs> and he's mad at her and then she pivots to, I'm just kidding, I was just kidding. Of course we're strong. It's ironic because the argument shows very obviously like Amy and Johnny are the strongest couple because they're not bickering about jokes or things they're saying and rubbing each other the wrong way constantly. Very interesting and messy with Chelsea and Jimmy. I don't think they should be together. I think they're too toxic. Last video I said, I could see them saying yes, but at this point, I don't see it. I believe the theory, we haven't seen their wedding. The cliffhanger was Chelsea being unsure, even though Jimmy at their last date, it was like an amusement park, roller coasters, love his wine promo, the whole nine. He seemed very sure, all in on her. Um, I don't know what went down for her to possibly break up with him at this point, but it feels like if it's a cliffhanger, this might be a breakup scene or something important. So finally, let's talk about the couple that didn't make it, and that's Jeremy and Laura. They were doomed from the end of episode nine where Jeremy very obviously cheated, though he insists he didn't and they just talked till six in the morning, you know. I very much loved that Laura and Jeremy's mom got together to maximize their joint slay of dragging his ass <laughs> through the mud. It was a very nice bookend to Jeremy and Laura's journey in these two episodes. The first time we see Jeremy, he meets up with his mom. It was supposed to be him and Laura meeting his mom, but Laura's not talking to him after the cheating. And his mom, Janine, was such a queen. She was not buying his bullshit. She said, you're lucky you didn't do that to me. Of course she was is concerned and worried about it. And she's just totally like on Laura's side. She doesn't even know the woman and <laughs> she's on her side. Jeremy's just like so confused. He's saying, I can't believe this mistake cost me my fiance. Oh my God, actions have consequences. Who would have thought? <laughs> Janine, the mom, rightfully so, tells him like, I could have told you that. I could have told you you would have lost your fiance over this, but you didn't call me. Laura and Jeremy don't ever reconcile from this. They run into each other again at the lake party and they're both dreading talking to each other, seeing each other. He's mad because he tried to text her and she only gave him nasty replies. He tried to send her flowers, she denied it. It's too big of a mistake to make when you're trying to marry someone on a fast track. It just is, and he should have just taken it with grace, but no, instead he is super petty. And honestly, I didn't like Laura before these episodes, but in these episodes she had some great moments. I appreciate that she is keeping the focus and the blame of all of this on Jeremy. Yeah, she does dig at her and says she's selfish, she's immature, she is crossing boundaries, inappropriate, whatever, but she says, the person that fucked up here is Jeremy. She was not focusing on going, yelling at Sarah Ann, trying to get one over on her, expose her, whatever, because we see a lot on these reality shows and life and whatever that sometimes the scorned woman will go after the mistress and go harder on the mistress rather than the man uh, that did the cheating in the first place. And Jeremy's just so immature. I mean, we saw him always goofing around in all the other episodes. And in this one, he just like let it all hang out. Like he came in in a Hawaiian shirt being like, I just want to see how far I could push it today. Knowing she hated the Hawaiian shirts, which his Hawaiian shirt was pretty tame. It was pretty neutral for a Hawaiian shirt. I don't know. He could have found a more obnoxious one. He's just trash talking Laura to all the guys, even though he's the one that fucked up. Even Jimmy. See, Jimmy turned out to be a nicer guy. He said he doesn't want to be like involved or hear about Jeremy's thing because it, it just seemed negative or toxic. Or I don't know. He just kind of walked away from that because he's had nasty fights with Chelsea and he has resolved them, whereas Jeremy and Laura had one nasty fight and called it quits. Um, so I think he's just kind of like, 
I don't need this energy. They're obviously essentially broken up. She's not wearing her ring anymore. She feels he had a duty to like protect her heart and protect her and think of her. And she did not hear from him at all that night. And that was very telling. And I agree, like, cut your losses now while you haven't invested so much time into this man. Good riddance. And I, I very much feel a good riddance energy from Laura these episodes and I love that for her. And so then, Later in the party, Sarah Ann walks in. And of course, Laura's like, oh my God, she had the audacity to step in here. <laughs> Laura and Jeremy have their final one-on-one -on -one confrontation and she lets him have it. It was fierce. It was one, one of the other great moments of these episodes. He's always like flipping it on her, like basically playing the victim of like her reacting in a way that's very fair and angry. She says he's immature, which he is. He does not, he's a con artist, like a scammer for coming on the show, which like, yes, yes he is. We got more tea on social media about that. So he's just trying to say like, can you at least, you know, put it aside so we can enjoy ourselves here? And she's just like, that's your priority. Your engagement just ended and your priority is like having fun with everyone, which checks out for immature, five-year-old Jeremy. She ends the confrontation saying, go kick rocks with open-toed fucking shoes. Great ending, drag his ass, injected into my veins, loved every second. <laughs> and the tea on Jeremy on social media, it has not been as extensive um, as Trevor's receipts. Someone's grandma messed up because this photo leaked of uh, him with a woman and her, a, a child, a, a young boy. The grandma or whoever it was commented like, this is my daughter and son and grandson. It turns out he was engaged to this woman weeks before starting filming Love is Blind. He did go on his social media and give a response to this. Trevor, by the way, has been laying low and hoping this all blows over on socials. So Jeremy addressed it more head on and said all the producers and castmates were aware of his previous engagement that had just been broken off and that just didn't make the edit. So he's blaming it on the edit. I kind of believe him about production and other castmates knowing because a lot of stuff doesn't make the edit. But I think it's very weird that he was engaged weeks before starting a new engagement. <laughs> like that's pretty weird and uh, seems a little fast. And as we saw, he is shady as hell. So him and Sarah Ann talk one-on-one. -on -one. Sarah Ann feels very attacked by AD's interrogation where AD basically calmly told her that her DM was inappropriate and she should have respected Jeremy and Laura's engagement. Sarah Ann is the victim. She feels very attacked um, and she's crying to Jeremy. And Sarah Ann and Jeremy talking is giving very two dumb bitches telling each other exactly. <laughs> very that, they're both like, playing the victim saying everyone's attacking us like we just love is messy and all oh, this bullshit it's just like they deserve each other they're scumbags they are in it for the clout maybe they could eventually get on a villain show like house of villains or something unfortunately they are both very boring i don't think other reality shows are gonna be casting them unless every other reality tv villain is unavailable somehow but anyway sarah ann and jeremy just talk and feel sorry for themselves and eventually jeremy says i made the wrong decision i should have chosen you all the signs were there and it's like of course he's saying this now that his engagement blew up like what other choice does he have? That feels very like sloppy seconds for Sarah Ann and of course she's happy to gobble them up <laughs> because all he cares about is having fun, says let's go on jet skis and so they go on jet skis in front of everybody. And yeah, I hope Jeremy and Sarah Ann live happily ever after. They can go plan the next insurrection or something. <laughs> And yeah, so Laura and Jeremy are donezo. Laura never wants to speak to him again. I think she is correct valid and yeah kind of a downer to <laughs> to end episode 11 on and go into our finale but at least we do have the one couple that is anchoring this show in a good way amy and johnny i think fans often say like oh we we just want everyone to be lauren and cameron and zach and bliss and 
Amy and Johnny, but like, I also wonder, would audiences be bored of that pretty quick if everyone was, every couple was as seamless? I think Love is Blind fans like the mess, at least. And unfortunately, now the mess is happening on the show and off the show. It's kind of an issue with reality TV right now in this era that we're in. And I might do a whole video on that coming up. Look out for that if you're interested. That's our Love is Blind season. All we have left is the finale. I don't know if they're going to have bachelor bachelorette parties like they sometimes do. I always enjoy that scene because they get so wasted most of the time. It's pretty funny. But I'm shocked they're going to squeeze in bachelorette parties with all the weddings, which is another good case for the theory that there's probably only two weddings in this finale. Um, and I don't mind them cutting down the weddings though, because they can drag on. If we don't have a third wedding, we'll have to see a breakup. Um, so it's kind of a lot to squeeze in one episode, but they're gonna do it somehow. And like I said before, I will be live streaming next Wednesday, March 6th at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and we're gonna be talking about the finale. I will go couple by couple. Maybe we'll talk about just the season as a whole, what we liked, what we didn't like, uh, theories that we have, any other tea that comes out on cast members. So yeah, we'll just celebrate the end of the season together, and then uh, March 13th, I will be watching the reunion live on stream, not broadcasting the actual footage, but uh, just on camera while I watch it on the side and then comment directly after the reunion. Feel free to join me for that. Come chat it up or check out the videos of the streams later. That's also an option. Thank you so much for coming on this journey. I appreciate all all the new subscribers here. Um, I cover a lot of different reality TV shows. If you have suggestions of TV shows you would really love for me to cover or pop cultural topics, I don't do those as often because reality TV keeps me pretty busy. But I love covering like rom-coms, some teen movies, teen shows type media, reality TV of course, trends. I usually cover Love is Blind and the Ultimatum US versions, but if there's certain international seasons you think I should really check out or other TV shows or other topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on episodes 10 and 11 of Love is Blind season 6. What do you think is happening in this finale? Do you agree with the theories presented in this video? Do you have your own theories? Let me know. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. I put out new videos whenever I feel like it about TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things. And you can follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to keep up with me or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!